Do you want to know what leopard gecko ovulation looks like? Stick around in this video and we will show you. Alright guys, I'm doing this low to the ground so that in case this gecko happens to fall out of my hands that it will just be a short fall to the carpeted ground that I have here. So you might want to do something similar to that. Now there's three main stages that a female leopard gecko will be in. She will be not ovulating, ovulating, or she'll be gravid, which means that she already is pregnant with the male's sperm and she's going to lay eggs. Today we're going to focus on all three categories. All right guys, so this is a nice blizzard female that we have here. She currently is not gravid, not ovulating, and she's in a completely normal state. So I do wanna show you what she looks like. So let's first talk about the best way to pick up your gecko to check for ovulation. There's basically two ways you could do it. One, you can try to look at its stomach like that, but it's gonna wiggle around a little bit. And as you can see, this is actually a pretty decent method. But to me, what puts a little bit less stress on the animal is simply picking it up by the tail, letting it do a handstand and looking at it that way. And I'm not squeezing the tail very hard or very tight. And what that allows me to do as well, it bends the back. It exposes a little bit more of the organs underneath and you can see ovulations a little bit better with the back bent. If you don't do the tail method, you have to do it like this and you kind of have to bend the back of the animal a little bit. I know it looks crazy and painful, but trust me, I'm being very gentle and it is not painful. See, the gecko's actually reacting very well here. And you can see she has one fatty white sac on this side of her stomach and one on the other. But what you're looking for with ovulation is bright pink dots. They are very clear and hard to miss when an ovulation is in full swing. Sometimes when an ovulation is minor or just at the beginning stages, the female won't want to pair. Uh, that's happened to me a couple of times. Most of the time they will pair at any stage of ovulation. But sometimes I've had some females that want to wait until the ovulations get more pronounced. And that will happen over the course of a month or so. She will go into ovulation about once a month and you could pair her any of those months and she will mate with the male, retain his sperm, use his sperm to fertilize her ovulations that will turn into eggs. And then you have a gravid female. So again, the method that I like to, to do because it automatically bends the back is just holding it gently by about the thickest part of the tail. So the base right here, the base of the tail and letting it do a handstand. When you let it do a handstand, you can clearly see the underneath of the belly and you can see if that gecko is ovulating. So we're gonna take a look at a gecko that is ovulating, but just for you guys, here's the other method with the tail, no pink dots. This is a gecko that's been a little tricky for me this year. She was a great breeder for me last year. Last year was her first year breeding. This year is her second year breeding. So she technically should give me less trouble, but she's giving me more trouble. Um, I've already paired her. She, she, I saw her ovulating. I paired her. She reabsorbed her eggs. And now I, and that was like two to three months ago, and I haven't seen her go into ovulation since. But now I'm beginning to see the beginning stages of ovulation once again. So for whatever reason, she ovulated, absorbed, stopped ovulating, and now she's re-ovulating. You just need to check your females, and they're usually on a very consistent routine, but for whatever reason, she broke that consistency. Maybe she caught the pheromones and the smells of the other geckos going into ovulation and that triggered an early ovulation in her, but her body said, no, I'm not ready to go into ovulation yet. I, I don't really know what happened there, but either way, to keep it simple, observe your geckos. When they do go into ovulation, that's when you wanna pair them. Let's see for you guys if I could do method number one, holding the chest and holding the base of the tail. And I can show you that this girl actually has a small, I believe to be a small ovulation, a single small ovulation, which is not what we're looking for. And I did try to pair her right now and she didn't take. So remember what I said, over the course of the month, so as soon as the female starts ovulating, that ovulation, that pink dot will get bigger and bigger and bigger 
until the end of the month before that ovulation goes away or before she pairs with the male and then that ovulation starts turning into an egg. So there's typically two ovulations and typically two eggs. So each ovulation goes into producing an egg. It's very, very faint, but you can see it right there. It's a very, very faint pink dot and it's just one of them. Usually there will be two of them and I will show you on the next example of a girl that is fully ovulating. But right there, you can see the example of what I believe is to be one ovulation. It's rare for a female not to breed if she starts ovulating at any point, whether it's small or whether it's big, it's rare that they won't breed. But she and a couple other females that I have, they didn't breed until their ovulation is bigger or at full size. And so I'm expecting that one ovulation to continue to grow. And then at some point I will see the second ovulation. Once I see the second ovulation, I'll, I'll try to repair her again. Cause I tried to pair her today in this current state and she wasn't receptive towards the male. Okay, now this is actually that last gecko's daughter. This is also a snow gecko and she is going into her first breeding season. She has not ovulated for me ever in the past because she was a baby last year. So every single year when a new female goes into ovulation, I will keep track of it. So this female is beginning to ovulate now close to February. I mean, we're at the end of January here and she's going into ovulation. This is typically the season that most geckos will go into ovulation. Some geckos will go into ovulation year round. They're on a different schedule. So just be aware of that in your collection. You wanna constantly monitor, check your females for ovulations because then you'll know what their beginning month of ovulation is. So this girl's beginning month of ovulation is February. That means every February I can expect her to ovulate but I will check earlier than February because sometimes they can go earlier or later depending on how they're feeling that year. So let's do a ovulation check. Boom, you can much more clearly see. So for the belly method, I'm holding right behind the base of the shoulders and right behind the base of the tail, uh, the base of the hind legs slash lower back. You kind of have to push on the back a little bit, not really push, just kind of bend, just kind of just kind of pull the gecko back and it will automatically go into position. So this is method number one. And as you can see, they're a little squirmy. So I don't particularly favor method number one. I favor method number two, where if I wasn't trying to show you on camera, method number two, I could look in two seconds. Check this out. Ovulating. You see that? How method number two, I can just barely pick the gecko up by the, the base of the tail, the thickest part of the tail, so it's mostly supportive, gently holding it, and make the gecko do a handstand. Gecko's doing a handstand, I bend the back a little bit, and I can see two pink dots, ovulation. Now for your guys' sake, I need to kind of fandangle this a little bit differently to show you. So please don't think I'm abusing this gecko here, she's perfectly fine, but you can see those two pink dots. You can see those two pink dots right there and staggered right there. So right underneath those pink dots are the fat bodies, fat reserves. So what those white liver looking patches, which are kind of big, they're like an inch or so. Uh, those are fat reserves. Right above the fat reserves, you will find your ovulations, bright pink dots. This girl is kind of at the beginning stages of ovulation. They will get bigger and brighter and more pronounced as time goes on, but she is ready to pair. All right, so one more quick example of what a ovulating female looks like right after she's paired. So this female went into ovulation and then I paired her and it's now been four or five days since I paired her and you can begin to see what happens. The belly of the gecko becomes blown up with more reddish pinkish pigment. And that is signs that the ovulations are growing, that an egg is growing in there. You can see right there, more reddish pinkish pigment. And actually you could, you could see the beginning stages of an egg, which ovulations are pink, eggs are white but you can almost see the beginning stages of an egg and a lot of more pink coloration right beneath the egg. And that's okay, that's what you're looking for. That just means because eggs have blood vessels in them, right? So while the female is developing these ovulations, 
there's going to be a lot of like pinkish reddish type coloration hues until those eggs are getting closer and closer to being laid as those eggs are getting closer and closer to being laid you will then see pure white eggs so ovulations are pink growing ovulations are pink ovulations that recently turned into eggs or are in the process of turning into eggs are pink slash white and then a full gravid female that is getting ready to lay two beautiful bright white eggs inside of her those eggs will be white and you will no longer see pink and for our final demonstration as you can see the theme color here at geeky gecko creations we love tangerine so this is a beautiful tangerine gecko that is gravid and has been laying eggs she's already going on to her fourth or fifth clutch of the season. A clutch again is the pair of eggs that a female lays one to two times a month. I wanted to pick her specifically because it's a little harder to tell that she has full eggs in her. Sometimes it's easier to tell, other times it's harder to tell, but eggs will actually look like fat bodies, but they're gonna be staggered and positioned where the ovulations were. Fat bodies are low in the gecko stomach towards the pooping area was their pooping hole. They're down here, fat body, fat body. Ovulations and eggs are higher up in the torso, about like mid to three quarters of the way down. So as you can see, um, I will show you where the eggs are with this girl, but they are staggered right there and right there. And so when you're looking at this in person, what you're looking for are white oval shaped eggs and they will be staggered a little bit, just like ovulations are staggered. The thing to remember about fat bodies versus eggs, fat bodies are right next to each other, but ovulations and eggs are staggered differently in the gecko's abdomen. And so that's just an easy way to kind of know what you're looking for. As you see it more and more, it becomes easier and easier to tell what you're looking for and you'll become an expert at it. Well, thank you guys for tuning into this episode. I know a lot of you guys have been asking about ovulations, breeding, um, and all of those kinds of things, you know, now that we're getting into breeding season. Check out my other videos. I got a couple videos that show what it looks like when a male breeds a female, um, and also recommend some content, any questions that you have, and I will shoot some short videos such as this one to kind of show you guys and answer those questions for you on video. So thank you once again. I'll see you guys in the next video and have a geeky gecko great day.